the responses that I keep getting are pretty interesting and consistent um, to my answer whether or not I would zap a lame world into existence full of lame beings. Um, and it, the essence of it is, you monster. Well, okay, that's kind of my point. Um, apart from guilt, there's no other answer to that. Now, um, the interesting thing about that is, is I say that that point of view um, that relies exclusively and ultimately on guilt um, is what eventually abolishes guilt. I don't believe that I have abolished guilt, and I'm very far from it. Um, and I'm not even promoting a system of ethics that takes guilt out of the out of the picture. I'm merely saying that it's possible <laughs> if we want to look at an ethical system that doesn't have guilt in it, that doesn't lead to the kind of nihilistic conclusion that I refer to, where we decide either uh, we jettison guilt or we jettison our own existence. There are precedents for that. There are examples of non-guilt-based uh, ethical systems. But again, it's my if-then, it's my material conditional. If we accept Gary's point of view, uh, then we are eventually hit a fork in the road. <laughs> we um, cease to exist as human beings. We cease to be what we are. Um, or uh, we cease to feel guilt. Uh, we abolish guilt. We say, okay, this has <laughs> reached the limits of its utility. It is no longer an efficient mechanism because we presume that guilt is around to help us correct ourselves and it now says the only logical conclusion to this kind of guilt is self-annihilation. Now, I <laughs> all along I've been avoiding calling people nihilists. <laughs> I, I may have inadvertently uh, fallen off the wagon on this one. Um, but let me assure you, I'm willing to put up with the abuse uh, that other people heap on me. Um, as I say, it just kind of fascinates me because I assume that people believe it. Um, if people will forgive me for honestly perceiving that point of view as nihilistic, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the choice that we have is to throw a huge chunk of our ethical system right down the tubes uh, or to um, continue to be as flawed as we are. Um, <laughs> I, okay, maybe I shouldn't have said I know what most people are going to think. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have said that, Gary, you're headed for the life of an angry loner, which I'm sure you're aware of and are cool with. Uh, if you ask me, that's a legitimate uh, lifestyle choice, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, but um, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, and I don't think that you've made a coherent case, or at least a convincing case. Again, I act against my own nature for no incentive, <laughs> other than avoidance of guilt. Again, that's negative utilitarianism taken to its logical conclusion. Um, absurd though it is. And uh, we, uh, uh, we have that choice, and we have the choice of saying, wait a minute, <laughs> this ethical system that we've adopted has a serious flaw. Um, and I think that that's the flaw. Now, <laughs> I keep saying that I believe that you've abolished guilt. Well, that's kind of a hucksterist Huckster-ish overstatement. Um, no, we, you haven't abolished guilt. But what I will say, though, is if we accept the premises of your position, or if we draw the conclusions, I guess, that seem inevitable in your position, um, that in a struggle between guilt and existence, guilt wins, um okay, that's a decision that I guess each of us has to make. 
and uh, you know there's always people out there who conclude that the world is wicked and has to be blasted out of existence science fiction novels are written about people who have that kind of mindset this wicked world uh, sky captain and the world of tomorrow uh, that's an interesting one um, actually I like that movie I like the visuals um, so uh, you know okay we have that option we have the option of sort of saying okay guilt and existence are in a death struggle here um, one of them is going to lose one of them at, if you push things to the extremes that you push them one of these two is going to lose one of these two is going to have to walk away uh, the winner you know that's if another one is going to be laying dead on the ground after this fight that's something I guess that has to be duked out in uh, in each of us as individuals because that's where guilt and our natures are determined um, ask somebody who struggled with say their own sexuality for 20 years when they finally um, decided I can't fake this anymore Okay, uh, they they you know usually it happens I guess around the age of forty where you say okay there's just there's no way I can I can do this, uh, and of course they say well it was a heck of a fight to do this and it was a heck of a leap to come out I guess, um, but they'll tell you that oh my God did I ever make the right decision when I did that I I would have simply wrecked my own life. I wonder how much of our own nature is mutable. That's a good question, isn't it? Um, and it reminds me of the nuns that I had to deal with in uh, Catholic school. They, it would be um, when you're pushing yourself as hard as you can, and you know you've uh, you're still not performing to standard. You hear the old, "You're not trying." <laughs> uh, that's guilt for you. Um, it's. Uh, it's it's your fault that you're not up to the the task, and again that that's fine. If somebody doesn't know what they're doing when they're um, wielding a sledgehammer to deal with a little tiny problem. Um, you know, I guess I forgive them because they were probably just ignorant of the effect of what they were doing, or maybe it had been done to them uh, as children. But as I say. Um, I'm not really advocating a non-guilt-based ethical system in as much as I'm illustrating one and saying that we have choices. Um, if we uh, bail on guilt, <laughs> like that, I think that's a lot of people's fear about this subject, is what happens when I say that I'm going to jettison the whole thing? Guilt, what do I do? Oh my God, the whole thing collapses. A lot of people do seem to think that way. Um, their ethical system has essentially become a house of cards um, and you sort of wonder why it is that they've never even thought beyond this <laughs> they've never really gone where they where their own ethical system seemed to lead them where their own methodology was leading them towards um, a showdown between existence and guilt um, some people, I guess, are going to choose guilt over existence. Other people are going to choose existence over guilt. Um, but I say that that cul-de-sac that we reach there, I guess it's more, as I say, a fork in the road, but it is a pretty darn final fork in the road, um, is one that is essentially unnecessary. You only abolished guilt if we say that the fork in the road is necessary and inevitable and inescapable. Um, I would say that that fork in the road, the choice between existence and um, being ourselves, is uh, artificial. I would say that it's only if we accept certain premises, i.e. if we base our entire um, system of ethics or a system of morality or whatever word you want to call uh, what you want to use although there's a lot of quibbling about words here but whatever you want to uh, call it your sense your set of obligations or whatever um, 
it, that only happens if you base your ethical system on guilt to the exclusion of other things. But there are, are there are other options out there for basing one's ethics upon. Um, if you rely solely on guilt, which I don't see that you've really, at bottom, um, done otherwise. Because as I say, when you when you run out of other options, you reach for the guilt. Um, we've tried to be nice to you, we've tried to talk sense to you, it's not working, okay, now we're going to start bludgeoning you with what a monster you are. Um, okay, that's fine. Um, now, again, even with this monster business, okay, let's say that we've concluded through all this, this, this reasoning, that I'm a monster. <laughs> okay, what, what should I do about the fact that I'm a monster? Well, I should, I don't know, annihilate myself. Because that's what, you know, monsters don't shouldn't exist. Okay, well, wait a minute, though. But the very fact that I'm a monster militates against self-annihilation because monsters aren't particularly worried about whether or not they're monsters. And, <laughs> you know, there's this crazy infinite re regression that takes place. Um, so, yes, I think that the, um, the way that you've so construed things is a dead end. Uh, and that, again, comes out in the reactions to my um, response to your question. It's just, you monster, you terrible person, you can't do that, you're horrible. I can't believe that there are people as horrible as you out there. Why does this shock you? You shouldn't allow this sort of response to shock you to that extent. That means that you haven't anticipated the answer. Did you even did you consider the fact that I might say yes? And I might say, I'm just doing it just for the sheer laughs and giggles of it. No other reason. Um, <laughs> you know, you, the shock and the anger and the rage and the vituperation and the, the, the insults and everything were almost ludicrously predictable. Um, again, you, you reach the end of the utility of your tools when you, when you make these stark um, Manichaean choices when you when you force people to make these choices, um, and again it's it's the old you know the the thing about guilt can precede the crime. All right, I'm a monster. I'm a monster. Let's see, let's say that you've just proven to me that I'm a monster. Okay, I accept Gary's reasoning here of the previous video. I'm a monster. There's just no way around it. Now what? <laughs> well, it's been, it's been proven beyond doubt that I'm a monster, so let's go on a rampage. That's what monsters do.